Good morning. Can I let you into a secret? Not many people know this. Over the past couple of months, I've been trying to broaden my reading genre by reading some poetry. It all began with a challenge to try something new. And as one of my children was going to university to read English literature, I decided to give it a go. It's still very early stages and I'm finding it difficult. The last time I read poetry was at all level. And while I passed, let's just say it was with an average score. Poetry can be short, but it has to be read slowly. And like with the Bible, context can play a key part in understanding what it means. I decided to begin by reading some of T.S. Eliot's poems, hailed as one of the greatest poets of the last century. One of the poems I've been reading is called The Four Quartets. It's a series of four poems which includes themes relevant to both this season of Advent and life today. In the third one, called The Dry Salvages, I came across this line which hit me powerfully. We had the experience and missed the meaning. We had the experience and missed the meaning. It seems to resonate today when we live our lives as a dash where seasons can pass in a flash. We operate with a default on hurry, yet we fail to press pause to process the flurry. We're in the season of Advent in the church calendar where we've been exploring two key themes of this season, waiting and hope, and what it means to wait in hope. Today's message is entitled, We Wait in Hope, by seeking God's meaning to our experience in 2020. The way we find God's meaning to our experience is in his word, the Bible. I don't know about you, but I never realised before March this year how much of the Bible would be relevant to a pandemic and the other major crises affecting our world in 2020. As we've seen throughout the year, from the stories of Jesus to the cries of the psalmist, through the events of the biblical prophets to its teaching on 21st century emotional health, we've been given pearls of wisdom and insight to discern God's fingerprints and footprints in our experience. And if you don't know this, let me just say that all biblical hope is centred upon God. If you've been using our daily Bible verse of hope this past week, you'd have seen in our readings from the Psalms how this is true. Here's two from last week to give as an example. Remember last Tuesday's from Psalm 33 and verse 21 and 22 where we read together. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you alone. And then on Thursday, we read from Psalm 62, verse 5, didn't we? Let all that I am wait quietly before the Lord, for my hope is in him. Here's today's from Psalm 146, verse 5. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord, their God. If you missed last week, and haven't had a chance to catch up yet. Remember the, that we said the biblical definition of hope is not taken from the dictionary of life today. Hope is not defined in the Bible by an if or a maybe. Neither is it defined by wishful thinking or escapism or even optimism. The definition of hope running throughout the pages of the Bible is one of expectancy. Of what will happen with certainty even when circumstances seem grim. Because of who God is and what he has done. It's why hope is powerful and life-giving. In today's Bible reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 44, we see this life-giving power of hope in God in action. Even when the people of God's circumstances were grim. It's through listening to God speak about himself. They find meaning to their experience and it brought them hope. We would be wise to follow the example if we want to find God's meaning to our experience of 2020 to likewise see hope arising. In chapter 44, we read God, or should I call him by his first name, as we mentioned last week, the Lord speaks three times. 
Each section is introduced by these words, thus says the Lord, in verse 2, in verse 6, and verse 24. And each time it reveals something of God's nature, which brought hope to the Israelites and meaning to their experience. The first time the Lord speaks, he reminds the people of God of the promise of his covenant blessings throughout the generations to a people who were both in need of deliverance from slavery and redemption from sin, as they languished incarcerated in exile in a foreign land, it brought hope and meaning to their experience. Hope despite their repeated unfaithfulness to the Lord and his covenant with them through idolatry and social injustice, that the one who formed them would remain faithful. Hope despite their anxiety due to their serial unforgetfulness of the Lord that the one who chose them would not forget them. Hope despite the bleakness and barrenness of their present circumstances that the Lord would refresh them and their descendants with his blessings. And hope despite feeling cut off and isolated that they would once again be free and known as the Lord's. As we seek God's meaning to our experience of 2020. His word speaks to us and through it we learn God is faithful. Faithful to his promises and his promises ring true because he is trustworthy. He is the promise keeper. Through Jesus we know he will never leave us or forsake us and hope rises. To an island where I see so many bound up by issues arising from a COVID-19 world and where the weaknesses of the human condition are increasingly evident. This is our message of hope in Jesus Christ. We are called to spread. We wait in hope by seeking God's meaning to our experience of 2020, knowing God is faithful to us. The second time the Lord speaks, he reminds the people of God of his sovereignty. We read, thus says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. To a people in chains to the superpower of the day. These words brought hope and meaning to their experience. What the Lord was announcing, and as we'll see, only what he was in a position to claim, wasn't he is one God among many gods. It wasn't even he is the only God. But it was also the sheer absurdity of these so-called other gods who weren't even worthy to be considered serious counterfeits. It's a message which continues in the part of the passage we didn't read today. As we seek God's meaning to our experience of 2020, his word speaks to remind us. He is still sovereign of the universe, whatever the nation say. Nothing surprises him. He doesn't get blindsided. He's seen it all before. You now, when I, when I remind myself of these thoughts and words, Hope rises. The last couple of weeks, I've been reflecting upon a conversation which took place in our Zoom church service a few weeks ago between a child and our new children's youth and families missioner who moves to St. Juan next month. She was asked by the child, what's your favourite game? What struck a chord with me wasn't the idea of a favourite game, but what game would I use to describe the experience of 2020? I don't know what game you'd choose, but I'd choose snakes and ladders. Here's why. It feels like the experience of 2020 has been so up and down, of highs and lows and peaks and dips. And then the past week happens. On the day it was announced a vaccine had approved, we moved into what feels like a, a second lockdown. It felt like a shot in the arm only to be slapped in the face afterwards. Like with a snakes and ladders game, just when you think you're moving towards the finish line, you land on the longest snake of them all. It's time to reset. We wait in hope by seeking God's meaning to our experience of 2020, knowing God is still sovereign. 
He's seen it all before. Nothing surprises him. The third time the Lord speaks, he reminds the people of God. He will fulfil his purposes. The Lord begins by outlining, if you like, his extensive resume, his extensive capabilities to bring about such things before outlining how it will happen. Then, for them, hearing how the Lord's purposes would be fulfilled brought a hope in three words because they hear of how they will return to their land. They hear of how their capital city, Jerusalem, will be rebuilt and inhabited again. And they hear about how their temple, if you like, the focal point in the city and the place where they believed God dwelt, if you like, this place where heaven and earth met, it was going to be recreated. We may think this all sounds wonderful. Yet what would have astonished them and would have been perhaps more difficult to swallow was who the Lord was going to choose to fulfil his purposes. Look at me, at the, with me, with verse 28. You see, let me ask you a question. Who was God's appointed representative to achieve his purposes? It was Cyrus. Who was Cyrus? Well, Cyrus was a Persian king who destroyed the Babylonian Empire to become the superpower of the day. It's a reminder that the Lord will use even non-believers to fulfil his purposes, irrespective of whether they choose to acknowledge God or his role at all. As we seek God's meaning to our experience of 2020, his word speaks to remind us he will fulfil his purposes his way. As we've seen in one sense, this looks increasingly through a vaccine. We wait in hope by seeking God's meaning to our experience of 2020, knowing God will fulfil his purposes his way. But there is still another purpose to be addressed, which T.S. Eliot also addresses in that poem, The Four Quartets, and which never goes away. In the same way, Israel's exile pointed to a bigger issue. Likewise, the experience of 2020 points to that same bigger issue in our world. The problem of the human condition. Here's how I see the problem of the human condition increasingly being played out in our island at this moment. It's in the attitude which thinks and acts that they are an exception to the rule. It's the reason perhaps we are where we are today. You know, I felt those same thoughts myself when I had to isolate for two weeks. We think we're an exception to the rule. We're not. It's the attitude which says we can be God. We're not. It's actually the reason for all of the world's problems. And it goes back to Eden. And why the prophet Isaiah will go on to write of how the servant of the Lord would come to resolve the problem. It's the Advent reminder of the coming of the Christ child, who came not as people expected, as the hope of the world, and who resolved the problem also not as the world expected through his death and resurrection. It's why we can always find God's meaning, even in the worst of our experiences, because he is the living hope. He is the only hope I have. He is Jesus Christ, his death and his resurrection. So let me leave you this morning with one way you can wait in hope by seeking God's meaning to our experience of 2020. It's journaling. You see, journaling is about firstly recognising where God is present in our experience. To me, this is all about asking the right questions. As a very good friend of mine asked me recently, what sustained me through the experience of 2020? Another question could be, where might I be sensing God leading me through this experience? Or what have I learned about God and myself through these past nine months? Secondly, journaling is about reflecting and recording. It's about writing down what God's meaning might mean and how that might, what that, how that might affect us. When I was asked the question I, I mentioned by my friend, I immediately started to jot some things down and hope started to rise from within. And thirdly, journaling is about prayerfully considering how to respond. What are the next steps we're to take in making sure God fulfills his purposes in you by bringing his meaning to our experience in 2020? We wait in hope 
by seeking God's meaning in our experience of 2020. Don't miss God's meaning for you in the experience. Shall we pray together? Lord Jesus, you said, I am the first and the last. We praise you for who you are, the sovereign Lord. And we thank you for the promise of your faithfulness to us. As we wait in hope, help us to seek your meaning in our experience of 2020. Give us boldness and wisdom to discern your leading, that we might fulfil your purposes in us. In the name of Jesus Christ, in whom all our hopes are founded. Amen.